Okay, well, uh, happy holidays and welcome to uh, this week's Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show um, every week as we are doing today, and then we post it to our archives for you to watch later at your convenience. Um, oh, excuse me. If you, uh, and I'll show you at the end of today's show, we can access all of our archived recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, um, anyone you think might be interested in the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state uh, or similar to your state library. So um, you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, schools, um, corrections, museums, archives, uh, anything and everything. Really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, um, something cool libraries are doing. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. We have guest speakers that come on Encompass Live sometimes. Um, and we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations about services and resources and things we have here. Um, and that's what we are have today. Today with us is Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. And she is our um, coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And she is here to do her annual summer reading program presentation. Uh, for the 2023 summer reading program. So if you are getting uh, geared up for that and thinking about next summer while well, we're having this snow coming in <laughs> this week, uh, this is the show for you. So I will hand it over to you, Sally, to um, go ahead and take it away. Oh, and I will mention first, just before we get to this um, into it, um, the slides will be available for everyone afterwards. Um, and I don't know how, if Sally, if you want to mention about the handout or talk about yeah. that later. I, talk, I th thought I'd talk about it right now because somebody might want to run print it off real quick. Sure, sure. So, go ahead. Um, well, before I tell you about that, I'll just say my usual spiel, which is the books I'm going to talk about are ones I've run across. We get review copies from publishers here at the Library Commission, but we do not get all bo books from anybody and we don't get things from all publishers. So, there's some people who aren't represented. There are also ones that, um, I've found at the public library, so you'll see library stickers on some of them, and a few I purchased myself because I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I wanted to have that book. Um, so the, these are ones that I've encountered that I think will be good possibilities for your library. You know your community much better than I do, so you know what your collection too, so you know what you have now and what which of these titles you might want to do, purchase to um, have a good selection of books for kids that you choose from this summer. And plus in the future, it'll be good to keep in your library collection. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to say that. And I also wanted to say that while I have basic age ranges, we all know that any group of kids, there's gonna be some who are reading higher than their grade level, some that are catching up and reading lower than their grade level, or interest level can really make a big difference in how hard kids try to read a book. Harry Potter proved that to us because Many kids read Harry Potter who hadn't read a novel much oh, at yeah. all else. So interest is also a big thing. So we want to think about that. And I'm sure there's some other things that will pop up into our heads as we go through the, the um, presentation this morning. But first, I'm going to close down my, um, or not close down, but just exit from, well. Open up a new tab. And then you okay. should be able to go to the commission. There we go. There you I go. just wanted to show you how to get to the handout. It will be with the archived program. So I already have that up on my T for Krista to use the slideshow and the handout, which has the correct title on the handout. When you see this one, you'll go, well, she wasn't paying attention, but <laughs> Eddie, that way, that's life, you know? I'm gonna fix it, but Janet's not here today to fix it for me. So you go to our webpage and you type on handouts. They can see this, right? 
because I can't tell that they can see it. And then the yep. first thing that comes up says Nebraska Library Commission handouts. Click on that. Right now, I'm the only one plopping things in here. And I've told people, you can use this spot too. And in that case, there'd probably be a, an initial page that says Sally or somebody else. So you can click on that. But right here is um, the handouts and you can get right there. See, this says NLA conference, October 6th, 2021. I don't know why. Wow. <laughs> that and <laughs> ago, but it'll get fixed. The list is correct, so don't worry about that it. That is when our conference was this year, yes, but not in 2021. <laughs> True enough. Just a little, a little, a little transposing of numbers. These no are problem. quirky things that happen because of me. <laughs> and um, the list that um, Krista will have with this presentation, with the Encompass Live things, says Encompass Live on it, just because I thought that would be nice. And this one will just say System Workshops or something because I use them to hand out at the system workshops too. But this is where the list is. And if you wanna run, print a copy, um, you can just watch the first half of the show later to catch the, the titles you might have missed because I'm gonna go ahead and, and get busy and get right into my presentation. Cool. Okay, so all together now, and we're gonna zoom through a whole lot of ages of, age ranges of books. So fiction picture books, we'll start with kinder garden and the ah. author emphasizes this word kind leo is nervous about his first day of kindergarten okay here we go I, something i forgot to say i have a blurb sheet because it keeps me on track and makes sure that i note the things that i think are important for you to know about the books so it might sound like i'm reading it but i am ad-libbing quite a bit making it a little shorter um just so that um, I stay on track and we get done before three this afternoon. Because <laughs> I know Crystal gets kind of grumpy at me. <laughs> anyway, Leo was nervous about his first day of kindergarten. The teacher sent a letter to each student's home before school started, asking them to think about showing kindness. What did that mean? She plans for the class to make a kindness pledge from their ideas. Leo is uncomfortable sharing with a new class. He doesn't know for sure who's gonna be in his class and he isn't sure he knows anything about kindness. But by the end of the first day of school, several students speak up about how they noticed Leo being kind to others, the things that he did. Maybe he does know something about kindness. This is a follow-up to the book, The King of Kindergarten. You might have realized that already when you saw the author and illustrator. On her first day of kindergarten, MJ's mama reminds her what the queen of kindergarten does. Quote, Brighten up every room we enter. We are caring and kind, and the good ones are always helpful to others. So MJ does her best to be a good queen of kindergarten, and she is. This is a wordless picture book originally published in Slovenia in 2018. We follow a young woman who put up posters of her missing dog. The art is in shades of gray and brown, except for the one red item on each two page spread. That red item shows the progression of the story by indicating a passerby who witnesses a small act of kindness and thus does something kind for someone else as a response to that kindness. Throughout the downtown and park of an unnamed city, kindnesses create more kindness until we return to the young lady who is thrilled that someone found her dog and returned it to her. So it's a very progressive story and a wonderful idea to think about how one thing sparks another. Told in rhyming text, this book encourages listeners to share their light as a firefly tries to do. Helping others, being kind, including others in whatever is going on, that helps his light shine brighter. Everyone can share, care, and be kind. A girl takes her dog for a walk through the neighborhood, hearing and seeing people helping and being kind to each other. That's what makes a neighborhood. And by the way, the dog does pee and poop during the walk, but the girl has a bag for the poop. She is a responsible pet owner, just so you know. Not mentioned in the story itself, but you see it happening. Good job. <laughs> Second grade teacher, Mr. Wilson, has invented a new gadget and brought it to school. It is the kindness machine. The students take turns pushing a button and the machine gives them different ideas of how to be kind. Everything's from smile, to 
invite and include. And then he tells them they all have this inside themselves already. They can be kind at any time, anywhere. Many cultures and religions welcome strangers to the home to eat and refresh. This book welcomes the reader in 12 languages plus English, representing many countries of the world. Images of happy people with open arms reminds us that we are all more alike than different. Pronunciation is addressed at the front of the book and at the bottom of each page featuring another language. And the languages are identified at the back of the book if you wanna know what languages are being spoken. Friends join together and become we instead of me. A group of children explore the world in all its diversity. An upbeat look at humanity. To quote from the book, hands, hearts, and minds, vibrant and strong, different, the same, we all belong. The end papers say, this book celebrates how honoring everyone's talent creates a world that is richer for us all. Zara loves to help, so when the teacher asks for someone to help new student Kyle, she volunteers. They become good friends until a couple of girl classmates at recess say he is a baby and he looks weird. They ask her why she helps him, but she is tongue-tied. They give her a hard look in class, so she tells Kyle, do it yourself, and walks away. She doesn't feel like herself, but what's done is done. The next fall, she is in a different school. It is a big school, and it takes her some time to find her way. She still thinks about Kyle, so when a new girl is introduced to her classroom, she finds her true voice, walks up and says, are you new? I can help. This is learning from your mistakes and choosing to be kind. An upbeat look at how there are always lots of good things happening in the world. Just look around and you'll see it. Children and adults share and help each other throughout this look at various towns and places. And the book notes that the author is the creator of the good news movement on Instagram, which I was not aware of, not being much of an Instagram person myself, but that's what the book tells us. This is a, a board book copy, and I just say that because sometimes board book versions of titles have fewer pages than the original book, and so it might be missing something. I haven't seen the full book, if there, if there, is, if there are more pages. Anyway, a young white rabbit talks about how the next day they will be helpful, patient, gentle, honest, generous, grateful, and kind and each word has its own page. The artwork shows each of these things happening. So it's good for clarifying those terms and it could be good for a discussion with the child. This is all about how the whole is greater than the sum of its parts and unity and connection are the most important of all. It's a, it's a concept book with a timely message. It offers a lot, look at early math concepts like part whole relationships, fractions and additions, and it encourages understanding and acceptance of all people. Well, we all know Jory John, and he has a good one for this list. The great started out sweet, but one day no one came to his birthday party and he felt grudge, grudge, grudge. Ooh. Since then he has been a sour grape holding grudges left and right. Lenny, a lemon, his only friend, has grudges too. One day they were supposed to meet in the park, but one thing led to another and the grape was delayed by three hours. Lenny ranted at him and didn't let him explain. The grape gave him some space and began to enjoy just sitting in the park, looking around. He had missed so much by spending all his energy on grudges. It is a bit didactic and his turnaround may be fast, but kids will enjoy the fact that he sees what he has been doing and apologizes to everyone he's been grumpy to. And it closes with, if you remember to be kind, considerate, forgiving, and grateful, life really can be pretty sweet. Told in rhyming text, the narrator reminds children that all through their lives, starting when they were very little, they know how to love and you know how to care. As a child grows, more nuances are added, such as how to share, you always play fair, and it closes with wherever life takes you, wherever you go, trust what's inside you and let kindness flow. This, this one's a lot of fun. Musa and his dad are riding the Dala Dala to the beach in Zanzibar, which is part of Tanzania. 
but the bus keeps stopping to let others on. Melissa thinks there is not enough room. There's no more room. But each time the people have a shuffle, a squirm, and a squeeze, or some wiggles and giggles and fun, and they do make some more room. Eventually, Musa himself invites the last group on the dollar dollar because each time they make enough room for everyone. Caring about others and finding a way to share space on the bus, everyone makes it to the beach and has a lot of fun along the way. You kind of want to ride that dollar dollar. <laughs> Henry is hoping for peace and quiet like he had before Marvin. And Marvin is naturally cheerful and talkative. Sound like anybody you know? Me? One day it all becomes too much and Henry yells at Marvin and then he gets his day of quiet. The next day Marvin quietly approaches Henry and apologizes for upsetting him. Henry has realized Marvin didn't know Henry preferred quiet and so he apologizes for yelling. They agree to take times of day for quiet and other times for talking. So there's a good resolution to the misunderstanding and talking is better than yelling and everyone deserves to have some of their favorite time whether it's quiet or loud. The author offers several ways children can be a bridge and offers kindness and support to others. They can be the first to say hello to a new student or invite someone to join, join in. It's okay if they say no. You should listen to others. All voices should be heard. Stand up to bullies and say, hey, you, stop being rude, which is an interesting way to, to step in. And the same author has another book, Brave Every Day. Camilla, Camilla borrows trouble by being afraid of, of a lot of things. When they play hide and seek at school, she only wants to hide. One day the class goes to the aquarium and Camilla again wants to hide, but the spot she's chosen already has her classmate Kai in it. He really wants to see a real live stingray, but he's afraid. He asks for Camilla's help and she says, I'll try. Working together, they both overcome their fear and observe the animals they will write their reports on. Facing things, even when you are afraid, is a big win, and helping others is another big win. Shocked out of their sleep, two young brothers find their home has been demolished and their parents are missing, so they grab a blanket and an orange and walk to the beach. There they sleep next to each other until morning. Other survivors of the event are on the beach and soon they begin to share what e whatever each has to eat. The younger boy peels his orange and shares the slices. Fortunately, a ship appears and the survivors get on board ready for whatever the future brings. And the author intentionally did not name a country, a city, a, a place, except that there's a beach in, in the sea, ocean, and did not say what happened to make this as universal as possible for people who have had sudden, unexpected, either from bombs or from storms, Sudden, yeah. unexpected. Natural disasters, yeah, yeah, you never know, yeah. I was going to ask, you know, where does it take place, but it, it could be anywhere, yeah. Anywhere. Way. And that was part of the purpose of it. This contains 15 individual promises, each with their own two page spread. One page is illustration and the other is text. Examples are I will be kind to others, I will be kind to myself, I will help those in need and ask for help when I need it. So, Oh, sorry, I'm getting ready to sneeze. Okay, one away. Um, something you can share, either um, buy two copies and tear it apart and put that up on your bulletin board if you want to. Yes, I did say that. Tear the book apart. You can do it. This is a, one of the this is a book I bought because I read about it and I said this is the epitome of what this um, theme is about. Ubuntu is a term used in Southern Africa referring to the idea that we are all connected. And this book itself was first published in South Africa, introducing Ubuntu to children. Hmm. The publisher's note states that Ubuntu means I am because you are. It opens with, when I look into your eyes, I see myself. I am you. Pages so show children laughing, playing, and helping each other. If they hurt you, they hurt themselves. And this book, like I said, sums up our summer reading program. And it's an interesting concept that I'd heard a little bit about, but I thought this book did a pretty good job of explaining it for children who had never heard of it before too, to understand. So you can take a look at it when I'm 
visiting other parts of the state with my pile of summer reading program books, take a look at this one and see what you think. It's a beautiful concept, yeah. And the theme for the all together now is kindness, friendship, and unity. Um, that's yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. When when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, so many people needed rescue that the firefighters, police, and Coast Guard couldn't get to everyone. Little mm -hmm. boats could help, and many people came from different places to help rescue people stranded by the storm. And they saved thousands of people. They were called the Cajun Navy. And so this is a book honoring those people who came out in a not pleasant conditions, not exactly great weather, to help people who were stranded. There is no mention made in this book about the negative actions of anybody against anybody else. This is all to celebrate people helping each other when they were needed. I don't know if you um, listeners have ever seen an indestructible book. You see up in the top left corner, it says indestructibles. They won't rip or tear and are 100% washable. The wow. clerk at the bookstore told me you can throw that in your clothes washing machine and wash it and it will be fine. I haven't tried that. I bought some of these. <laughs> I bought this one. <laughs> what is it made out of? Is it like more like a like fabric type? Well, not exactly. Um, I have some in my office. You can come and feel it. And I'm carrying this one around so people who are coming to the workshops, they can feel this one. It really is pretty indestructible. And I gave one to my husband's cousin's daughter who had a baby and she loved it. And then her, her twin sister had a baby six months later and I gave her one. And my his cousin told, told us that she opened up the present, took that book out and handed it right away to the kid. She went, yeah, I got one too. So <laughs> she'd already heard about it from her sister. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Awesome. This is just basic things from sharing toys to helping around the house. Children, babies, and parents look for ways to be kind. And there's 10 pages of story in this, so they're not long. There's some of these are just um, pictures only, no text, but a lot of them just have a several words on a page. Well, we've all had a bad day, haven't we? This is told in rhyming text, and all the animals in the forest are having a bad day. Squirrel is stuck hanging from a tree limb. Bird's beak is stuck in the tree. Snake is in a knot and tortoise is upside down. But Mousy, where's, is Mousy in Fox's stomach? Squirrel has a plan to help them all so he can help Mousy. At the end, Fox apologizes and the book closes with, so when we're feeling gloomy and in a sorry state, helping one another can make a bad day great. Because everything turned out right. I don't know what the fox is going to eat now, but he's not going to eat mousy anymore. <laughs> Slug knows just what to do when she encounters a lonely beetle. Give him a big hug. Then they decide to pass it on. One by one or two, they encounter other animals who are having a bad day. A group hug is just what they need. Then Bear comes along and everyone scatters, except <laughs> Slug, who still has some hugs to spare. After that hug, everyone comes back for one more group hug with Bear. And at the beginning of the book, they always offer a hug before giving others the a hug. So that gives them the opportunity to say no thank you, which I think is an important thing to model in the book. We're not just going to grab you and hug you. Yeah. Roy and his trusty partner, Roto the helicopter, work together to put out a fire in the canyon. Roto has a hose that sucks up water from a lake and then they dump the flame, the water on the flames. The flames are high and they do this 11 times until finally the fire is out. On the way home, they rescue a dog who then becomes their partner too. They will rest and be ready for their next, next adventure. This is told in rhyming text and the idea of the helicopter that works together with her human to save the canyon will appeal to young readers. This, this copy of the book is an English and Dine or Navajo version. There's also an English only version. This contains selections of statements such as, I am kind when I help my family. And I feel grateful when the earth is kind to me. Each two page spread has a statement on one side and a full page illustration on the other. So it's good for prompting discussions with children. Jenny is sad, though you may not know it, she still laughs and plays but her best friends know, best friend knows she is still sad. Together today they get popsicles. Jenny likes the blue ones. 
Sometimes the best and only thing you can do for your friend who is sad is to be there with them. And we know that that's true. Noor and her cousin Amir were best friends and would climb trees and play hide and seek when schoolwork was done. They planned to start a secret club with their friends, but Damascus was hit with bombs from airplanes and everything changed right then. Noor and her family hid with others, a total of 30 in a neighbor's basement meant for six. Food was limited as well as electricity. When there was a lull in the fighting, Amir was sent to buy bread and he would also pick up books amid the damage of homes and businesses. Others did the same. Noor suggested a secret library. They carried the books to a nearby basement, cleaned it up, and the library was open every day, closing only for the Friday prayer. Many people found information, enjoyment, and safety in the basement library. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Arnold is great. Oh, finally I could turn my back. <laughs> Arnold is the only member of a superhero family who is not super. And every day, one or another of them will ask him, have you found your superpower yet? The answer is always, not really. Arnold answers the phone and takes very neat notes. Still, one day when he had a phone call and rang the alarm, no one came. Maybe they were already out saving the world. Or maybe they were in the park eating donuts. He didn't know for sure. Arnold puts on his retired great-grandmother's mask and cape and filed onto the bus in an orderly manner. Finds several situations he helps in an ordinary way and then finally finds the girl who called. He handles this situation too. The note the girl had from her friend wasn't neat, but he could read it and saves the day. Back home, his family is watching the news. It is all about super nice guy. Arnold still answers the phone, but sometimes he goes out to help people too. And he rides the bus in a mannerly fashion. And he doesn't tell his family anything about it, who this super nice guy is. Her beloved grandma gave her the name Punky Aloha. She had been shy and scared of making new friends, but one day her grandma wanted to make her famous delicious banana bread and they were out of butter. Grandma gave Punky her brave glasses so she wouldn't be afraid to go to the store by herself. Grandma asked if she remembered how they always share their aloha. Be helpful, be giving, be brave. Punky helped a pig, a bee, and a boy on the way to the store and she made a new friend. Starting with an illustration of a girl releasing a ladybug out the window, the text says, kindness is sometimes a cup and a card. The story goes on to show various scenarios where someone is being kind to others or to animals. The illustrations continue to clarify the meaning of the text, as in the first example. Listeners cannot be asked to name another situation where they or someone they know show kindness. Based on the real history of her great-great-grandfather, Sam, the author tells of the chair he built after arriving in America. He carved the German word Willkommen, welcome, across the back panel of the chair. A year later, he and the family he lived with and worked for moved to Wisconsin. As the chair travels with Sam and families grow and change, new words of welcome are carved on the chair. Finally, her family lost track of the chair, so Wells invented the rest of the story, including two nuns from the Dominican Republic. Listeners will enjoy the history of the chair and how it and the people who had it welcomed others. Aww. Yeah. Now we have some they lost, the, they lost the chair. <laughs> yeah, and I felt bad about that. <laughs> that happens though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Perhaps it just fell apart. We don't know. Um, this is about Patsy Takamoto Mink, who was the first Asian American woman elected to Congress. And she is the person who was behind the efforts to create Title IX, the law that requires federally funded schools to treat boys and girls equally. Because when she was um, growing up, she wanted to be a doctor, but at the time, medical schools wouldn't admit women as doctors. So Patsy carved her own path. She went to law school, ran for a seat at the Congress, and then began her efforts to pass Title IX to give girls the same chances that boys had. Eliza Davis lived in London and, and admired the author, Charles Dickens, but one thing was wrong. When she read Oliver Twist, the character of Fagin was horrible. He was mean, selfish, and greedy. He was also Jewish, as was Eliza. Also, Dickens referred to him quite often, not by his name, but as the Jew. She wrote a letter to him saying that the character of Fagin encouraged a vile prejudice. 
She asked him to write this wrong, but he replied that Fagin was based on real people and other bad people in the book were not Jewish. Sensible people understood this. She wrote again saying that all his Jewish people were criminals, which is not true in real life. Mm -hmm. Finally, monthly installments of his newest book, Our Mutual Friend, came out, and Eliza found the character of Mr. Rhea, a Jew, to be kind and generous. And more, with the reprint of Oliver Twist, he had the publisher switch out all references to the Jew and put in Fagin's name instead. Eliza's letter made a difference in how Dickens portrayed the character of Fagin. And so just a couple of letters can bring about change that is for the better. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it had been, because when I read it, it, it called him Fagin, not the Jew. I love this story too. This is based on a true story. Victor and Lenisi are twins living in Malawi and they used to do everything together. You know, play, go to school, but now they are eight. Victor goes to school and Lenisi helps with the chores at home. One is walking to the river five times a day to get water for the family. When the teacher at school gives the students a homework assignment to see if all the children have equal opportunities, Victor knows that Lenisi does not. He suggests that they take turns going for water and going to school. Soon other families in the village are following their same plan. And it shows how one person really can make a difference. And now they both get an education. This is part of the Ordinary People Change the World series by Brad Meltzer. Good basic information on Malala's childhood and the things that inspired her to speak up for free education for girls and for everyone. The scene on the school bus when she was shot is carefully portrayed. Readers do see a small illustration of a man pointing a gun, but that illustration does not show who he was aiming at, if that's important to you. And I never knew this. I love this story too. Fatima loved to learn and she had an almost insatiable curiosity about everything. Born in Tunisia in about 800 CE, Fatima and her family moved to Fez, Morocco, where she and her sister grew up. Educated in the home, they both chose to give back to their community. Fatima, Fatima oh, I didn't practice this. Fatima built the Al Khwarawirin Mosque in 859 CE that functioned as a school for all men and women. It is the oldest continually operating university in the world, and it's still in functioning today. And wow. you, yeah, so it's about about the value of education and giving back to all. She and her sister both tried to find ways to give back to all the people in the community in the world. So mm -hmm. amazing. Some beginning readers. Well, there's Clark the Shark, of course, friends forever. Clark is excited about a drawing contest. The winner will receive Captain Suckermouth comics that are signed by Captain Suckermouth. Don't you want to win that? He is too excited to listen to his friend Joey, who is sad that his pet catfish died. Clark feels bad later for ignoring his friend and decides the best thing to do is to draw a sympathy card for him since Joey doesn't want to see him. Clark also comes up with a list to help him remember to listen to and care about his friends. So that's pretty admirable. The Good Egg has organized a talent show, but he can't think of any kind of an act he could do in the talent show, so he decides he will just watch and support his friends. During the show, several acts have problems and the Good Egg is there to assist. After the show, the performers all thank him for his helpfulness. On the way home, the Good Egg thinks, I guess being kind is a talent too. That's what. And this is um, El Toro and friends from the world of Vamos. El Toro and his friends are a team, but long, long ago they met. They didn't know each other. They were um, all students of Ricky Rothon, known as the Big Cheese, and he was the best lucha libre wrestler ever. He taught them all the moves that they should know, and then. He challenged them to defeat him one by one as their, to, pa to pass their final test. Well, one by one, they could not defeat him. But as a team, they were victorious. And that was the first time they teamed up. So it's about working together to get things done and being positive. Some early chapter books. Simon and Chester series, this is book one. Chester and his friend Simon, a ghost, find some clothes in the attic and decide to be detectives. Now all they need is a case. Where can you find a case? They find an unfamiliar dog in the kitchen. Now they have a case. Where does this dog belong? It's silly and fun. The detectives really get into sleuthing and helping the dog, who really wasn't lost in the first place, but you find that out later. 
Cornbread and Poppy. Cornbread is a mouse who likes to plan, organize, and get things done. His best friend, Poppy, is a mouse who enjoys adventure and activity for fun. Now, Cornbread has all the food he will need for the winter, and Poppy does not. Nothing is left to forage for where they live, so they go up Holler Mountain to look for food there. Cornbread is afraid, but he won't let Poppy go alone. They hide when they encounter an owl, but it turns out he's a vegetarian, and he knows someone who has some extra food. It is their old friend, Miss Ruthie, who went up the mountain and was never heard from again. They all thought she died. She has plenty of extra food to share with Poppy. But I talked about this in my best books for children and realized this is a perfect book for the summer reading program too. So if you listen to that one, you had to hear this again, and I have some more that are coming up in a minute. There's gonna be lots of crossover for that and possibly your teen one that's coming up. Yes. <laughs> That's in early January, January 7, maybe, possibly. This is the Little Animal Rescue Series, and this is either book two or three. It's not book one in this series. I haven't seen book one. But in this, Callie is riding the Ferris wheel with her friend Gabriel when a damp fog surrounds them. Callie is magically transported to a farmland she does not recognize. This has happened to her before, and she knows that there is an animal nearby that needs her help. A fledgling barn owl wasn't ready to fly when her family left the area, so Callie must protect her, first from a horned owl and then from a raccoon, and locate her family's new nest in the dark. Fortunately, all went well, and the owlet was reunited with her family. When that happened, Callie was returned to the time and place she had been before the rescue on the Ferris wheel. This is the Good Guys Agency Book One, Lucky and Rudy finally have agreed that the name of their club is the Good Guys Agency when a third boy arrives, Red, new from next door, asking what their agency does. Lucky replies that they are here to make the world a better place. To help with their first task, they travel in their imagination to visit Fred Rogers first as a child and later as he develops his TV show. Their mission is to remind their classmate, Charlie, to be kind to his younger brother. And while they're visiting Fred Rogers, they, um, in, are involved in the episode where he and his uh, police officer, or is it yes. a male? Yep. yep, the police officer friend. Yep, they share their their put their feet in the same pull well, their feet off because it's so hot. Yep, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I found this at the bookstore across the street. And went well. This looks like perfect for summer reading program, so I bought that one too because I mm -hmm. couldn't resist. And there are. Um, the paperback of this will come out in May, May 2nd of next year, if you want to wait for that. Oh, the, this is the Mythic series. This is book one. Marina is 10, and she is excited for pairing day in their land of Terra Familiar. It is the day she will meet her lifelong animal familiar, except this time Marina and four other girls are not matched. They must go out into the world and find their mythical familiars something that happens rarely. Not only that, but the five of them must work with their familiar to thwart someone who wants the mythic's power for themselves. In this first book, Marina bonds with her mythic, a kraken, and together they, at least for now, find a way to save Terra Familiar from evil. And, oh, I'm sorry, this is the one where the paperback's coming out in May, not Fred Rogers, sorry. And Sir Ladybug, when I'm just <laughs> talking about him at the, reading the, um, yes. He's back. <laughs> he is a helpful guy. There are three books out so far. This is the first one. This is book one. Sir Ladybug, his Harold Pell, a roly-poly beetle, and his squire Sterling, a snail, are asked to save a caterpillar from being eaten by a chickadee. He demonstrates to the chickadee that he is extremely capable with his sword, but he really doesn't want to hurt anybody. So the solution is Sir Ladybug's is tops at baking a world-famous life-changing lemon cake thus saving the day and keeping his friends safe. Hmm. Book two is about Sir Ladybug and the Queen Bee. It is laundry day when Sir Ladybug is summoned to the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee is a bully and believes her feelings are the only ones that are important. She wants Sir Ladybug to replace one of her knights to do whatever she says. He agrees, thinking he can get his sidekicks, Pell and Sterling, out of jail later. But not too much later, Sir Ladybug is in jail with his friends for not agreeing to bully the others as the Queen insisted. But don't worry. She will get her comeuppance. And book three, oh, this is this is dire. Sir Ladybug's book he checked out from the library is almost overdue. No, <laughs> must return it before sundown. But first he has to help 
23 and a half animals because problems keep coming up on their way to the library. Finally, Sir Ladybug, his squire Sterling and Pell are ready to go, but now there are three bookworms between them and the library. All they want is the library book. Mm -hmm. oh my goodness. I wonder what'll happen. People are on pins and needles now. <laughs> This is book one in Wednesday and Wolf series. Wednesday has a service dog, Wolf, due to her ju juvenile arthritis, and they run the Wednesday and Wolf Detective Agency for two months now so far. Their new case, the neighbor Mrs. Winters, an opera singer, is missing her cat, Autumn, who has run away. They follow clues and are sidetracked a couple of times by some red herrings, but they do find Autumn. Full color illustrations on every two page spread help break up the text and carry the reader along. Throughout the book, we see what Wednesday writes down in her notebook, and we learn more about how Wednesday and Wolf handle her juvenile arthritis. At the end of intermittent chapters is a note telling the reader how many chapters they have completed, or asking a question like, what do you think Wednesday found? Trying to encourage continuing through the book. Book two, the new pup is Ruthie, and she belongs to neighbor Mariposa, and Ruthie's job is to let Mariposa know if her sugar level is too high or too low because she has juvenile diabetes. Mariposa is learning about being a detective, and the newest case is the disappearance of Wednesday's twin brother, Rafe's drone. Wednesday creates a map to show where everyone was standing and asks questions to try and solve the mystery. There, there are, again, the illustrations and the occasional encouragement at the end of um, this every uh, intermittent chapters. But book three, The Runaway Robot, came out November 15th this year, but I haven't seen it yet. Some fiction for grades two to five, roughly. This is, uh, Amazon says this is book one of a duology and it does kind of end on a what note at the back. So darn good thing there's gonna be another one. Leo's father, oh, Leo, father, excuse me, is a coalition scientist and he decides it's the best thing for them to leave Earth. Earth has had now people uh, from other planets come and land and kind of take things over, but not in a mean way, just kind of in a, you guys are obsolete way because all their technology is a lot better than ours. And we're having trouble finding things we can do to survive. So Leo and his older brother and his father are on a spaceship headed somewhere. When the ship is attacked, his father is kidnapped and everybody else is stranded. They, they've, ship that attacked took all their fuel and they're stranded in space with no way to power themselves to somewhere. Oh. So the brothers decide that there's another than another ship comes, a pirate ship that's going to, you know, take their stuff, but there's nothing left to take because it already got jacked by the first batch. So Leo's brothers tells him, hide on the pirate ship and get help. They all know where they where we are. Um, so you have to hide on the pirate ship to go get help. But the road is dangerous and pirates only look out for themselves, or do they? Leo must decide who to trust as he tries to stay alive and save his family, even as he comes to understand that there aren't many people, human or alien, that he can count on in this universe. Haven Jacobs, 12, is in seventh grade. She has echo anxiety as the news of bad things happening around the world can overwhelm her. Things like the ice caps, they're gonna melt. You know, that's a kind of a dire thing, but the ice is melting in the North. She keeps it to herself until she finally has to share with her friends and family. Her class begins the annual seventh grade study of the nearby river and Haven is surprised to see no sign of frogs. Her br older brother told her frogs were everywhere when he studied the river, something is wrong. As they investigate with the help of her friends and teachers, Haven becomes concerned that the new factory, Gemba, might be poisoning the river. Her father was out of work when the last factory closed. Now he works for Gemba, and this may threaten his job, but they need clean water in the river. Addie is in fifth grade, and her mother, she and her mother have moved to live in with one or another of Tish's older brothers ever since Addie's wonderful grandmother died. Now Tish has a probationary job at the Happy Valley, Happy Valley Village Retirement Community in Pennsylvania, where they live with nice Uncle Tim and his family. Addie and Dixon, whose mother also works at the village, walk to it after school each day 
so they have to be sure the, ne the manager never sees them hanging around there. Curmudgeon Mr. Norris is Tisha's first assignment, and while looking for something at his house on another part of the property, she accidentally sees, sees a strange blue bodysuit with a silver buckled belt in the back of the closet. This discovery gets Addie Dixon and their newest friend Marwa thinking Mr. Norris is a retired superhero. The kids become friends with several of the retired folks living in the village, including Mr. Norris. A humorous yet serious encounter with some investors during the Halloween party will have readers rooting for the re residents and the kids. So it's about caring for others, friendship, and helping where needed. That's all part of the story. This is just silly but fun. Evie and her dad and stepmom have just moved to Lime Bay and opened their diner. Evie really wants to help make the diner a success, but her kind stepmom asks her to count pots and pans or go have fun on the beach. In her frustration, Evie, holding a book someone had left behind, says, then I wish I could go back home, which results in three princesses from the book she was holding, who are determined to give her that wish. No one else can see them. They claim they are agents of H-E-A-R-T, the Happily Ever After Rescue Team, and they are there to rescue Evie. Each agent has their own tendency. Cinderella, Agent C, thinks all anyone needs is a coach to escape, and they'll be rescued. Agent R, Rapunzel, thinks long hair will solve the problem, whatever it is. And Beauty, Agent B, thinks a fluffy dog is what's needed. Evie soon learns that Iris left the book behind on purpose so she wouldn't have to deal with the princesses anymore. But Iris apologizes and offers to help Evie with this whole situation. And soon, Evie meets Zach, a friend of Iris. Zany happenings and tricky rescue requests help keep the agents busy. This is purely for the fun as unrealistic events occur, but readers who love fairy tales and magic will be enthralled. And this is just book one, so there's bound to be more. Calla and her mother Elizabeth have always survived as long as they are together. Elizabeth is an expert on ducks, but not so good at earning money or paying bills. Calla has just been sent to her mother's former boarding school while Elizabeth earns a much needed wage guiding the foremost duck researcher into the, in the world to the Amazon and the so far unknown breeding ground of Malardis Amazonica. Rather than being pleasant, the school is now run by a former student who is diabolical and nasty. After Calla learns his mother has been, her mother has been kidnapped, her new roommates and all the students at the school rally to toss out the current headmistress. Clever, humorous, with wonderful characters, Readers will cheer on the will cheer on the cheer on the rampaging students and nuns. As it said in front side the front cover, can Calla, her friends, and a motley crew of nuns defeat, defeat an evil headmistress and find Elizabeth before it's too late? Betcha. Again, silly fun, but they do endeavor to get things accomplished. Madison, Maddie, age 12 learned a lot about wildlife rehabbing from her now deceased grandma. Her parents have forbidden her from being, bringing even one more animal home, not any animal, not any reason, but she has to rescue two beaver kids whose parents were shot. She depended on, depends on knowledge from her grandmother that she learned and information on the internet to help them. The friends are also investigating to find out who shot the beaver parents. There's humor, there's being respectful to adults, and caring about wildlife. This is a full color graphic novel fiction based on the author's real experiences in wildlife conservation in her home country of Vietnam. In this story, Chang is teaching short Soria how to live in the wild. After years of no, because she is a girl and too young, the Cat Tin National Park accepted her as a volunteer. Soria was only two weeks old when she came to the center. Now Chang takes her out in the wild to simulate finding food and other knowledge she will need. Success comes slowly, but it happens little by little. They find a wild forest where she can live, and Chang goes along to help her adjust. Eventually, Sora is able to live on her own. Success. And I like how it's based on her life, but is fictionalized to make the story flow a little better. This is great. <laughs> this is a full color graphic novel and a post apocalyptic post-apocalyptic countryside, two fighting brothers accidentally activate an AI, an artificial intelligence toy from the past. His name is Fred, and he is positive and upbeat and wants to be everyone's friend. And he is, doesn't take no for an answer. That won't happen. Um, 
Determined to make the world a better place, he decides he's going to talk to the two most powerful and battle-hungry warlords, Lord Bonkers and Papa Mayhem. He's going to talk them into being friends. It's a mission doomed from the beginning, unless friend can, Fred can find a way to inspire everyone to get along and play nice. And everybody who lives in here, in this world, has no confidence at all in Fred, but he just comes along and he's happy. And the warlords send him to the torture chamber, which makes him giggle, whatever's happening in there, because it, it doesn't really hurt him. He's a, he's a, About that. And then they tell him, in the meantime, you should go do this or that. But he sees the words meantime as mean time because they are mean to each other during that, those times. Mm. But over time, Portico realizes what is happening. His parents are splitting up. Others living in the apartment building do not tell Portico, letting him come to the truth when he is ready for it. Portico and his friends are busy, busy with lots of goings on, as in dealing with Herbert Singletary the worst who over time becomes, you know, not so bad. <laughs> Lots of illustrations, a winding plot, supportive friend, and Stunt Boy's trademark moves will appeal to readers. I have two books, the first two books in the Animal Rescue Agency series. This is the first one, Little Claws. Esquire Fox and Mr. Pepper, a rooster, formed the agency after the rooster convinced her to give up on a life of crime. Now they are on their way to rescue a polar bear cub who is floating on a loose piece of ice. Complications arise several times. Not the least of them is the hunter who is after Esquire. They have a network of local agents throughout the world who help them get to where they are needed and continue to help while they're there. The cub is very hungry and his mother is frantic. The only way to rescue him may be by hmm, glider. When she is flying out over the cold, cold ocean, Esquire realizes there is no good way this can end. What's going to happen now? Book two, yes, she's still alive, so that's good. Esquire and Mr. Peppel, Pepper travel via sea turtle to a tropical island. Beetle, a pangolin, was in rehearsal for his concert when something went wrong and he ended up down in a crevasse in the rocks. Avoiding being seen by humans while working toward rescue, Esquire was saddened that exotic pets in the hotel had luxury, but they were still ultimately, ultimately locked up in a hotel room, still a type of cage. But there's something odd about this rescue. Esquire cannot quite determine what it is that's odd. But this series is about helping others, caring about others, and being honest about your wants and needs. And this is another new series about the Boxcar Children, the Endangered Animals series. This is book one in that. The four Alden children travel with their grandfather from Grenfell Greenfield, Connecticut to Port Elizabeth, New Jersey. Grandfather has some friends there and they all enjoy the aquarium, the lighthouse and the beach. But overnight there was an accident. A tugboat ran aground and spilled some oil in the ocean. For some reason, the light of the lighthouse was off. The family helps with some of the cleanup and works to solve the mystery of the lighthouse. Environmental activities are woven into the story. And mystery fans and fans of the boxcar children will enjoy the start of this new series. Some nonfiction for grades two to five or so. This is part of the, um, the Who, I, it's a graphic novel version of the Who Was series. And this is about Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott. So it's a brief biography for, focusing on her refusal to give up her seat on the bus and that effect on the civil rights protest that follows. There are occasionally one page explanations, clarifying items such as, sorry, something's up on my screen. Um, clarifying, clarifying items such as the Jim Crow laws or introducing people like Martin Luther King Jr., for example, for those who need more information. So you can ignore that or you can read it as you wish. Each two-page spread contains information and illustrations focused on one march. Many were held in the United States, but a few were held in other countries such as India, Bulgaria, and Kenya. 
At the back of the book, it says, most of all, we march for one another so that all of us might have a better life in the world we share. So it's a two page spread on each different march. This was fascinating. Of course, I love whales, but um, the author first includes information about the variety of whales, why they eat and why they migrate. And then she introduces why whales are uniquely positioned to help the planet. They provide nutrition through their poop to areas that need it. They store carbon in their bodies for years. This is carbon and that is not in the air. When they die, they float down to the ocean floor, which provides the needed carbon to the plants and animals there, instead of it again being up in the air. So all of this helps the planet. So let's protect the whales, which we should protect anyway, but it was very interesting. I did not know that. That's very cool. <laughs> Didn't either. Part of the She Persisted series, I have three in a row here. This is about Temple Grandin, who was different from other children, but she learned and became a well-respected scientist and animal behavior specialist. Then she decided to tell the world about her autism and that learning differently should be accepted around the world. And I didn't realize that she, it was not known that she had autism when she first became famous and was um, giving presentations and, and such. As expected in this series, a black and white illustration is included in about every three to four pages and larger size type makes this like an early chapter book for nonfiction. It includes references at the back of the book. The second one is about Harriet Tubman, who of course is well known as a, a conductor on the Underground Railroad and wanting to help others to freedom. And Malala Yousafzai. Again. Again. So this is a longer book because the first one was a very short picture book style nonfiction. Um, and in here they talk about the few details of her life so far and that she won the Pakistani the first Pakistan National Youth Award in 2011, and later in 2014, the Nobel Peace Prize. And after that, she established a Malala Fund, a nonprofit charity. So, mm -hmm. been busy. Um, I'm gonna jump in here just now because we're a little after 11 o'clock. No, you're good. No, 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 you're perfectly fine. <laughs> I just, you know, um, usually with Sally's, uh, she does her uh, best children's and youth teen books of the year two other sessions um and this one they always run a little long because there's so many good books out there so i just want to let everyone know um we're going to go until sally's through all of her presentation and all the titles she has um if you need to go because you only allotted an hour for today's show that's fine um we are recording it you can watch the rest of it um later um, when you have time um and of course as we said at the beginning the slides and her handout with specific details about each book will be available as well for you so go ahead, Sally, and take it. Thank on. you. Good point. <laughs> this is um, also a book I bought because I was curious. And it's it's like a handbook about kindness. It has some spaces to write or draw your responses to questions or situations presented. And um, the author delves into what is good and how do we know that this is good. And in talking about being kind and making a difference in the world, he brings in evolution, genetics, DNA, natural selection, and the chapter discussing, are we born kind? That's chapter mm -hmm. four. There's a lot going on in this little book. And if you are coming to one of the workshops, I will have that, my copy there. You can look through it and see what you think. But I thought it was um, an interesting approach because really he says, how do we know what is good and what is bad? We all think we do, but how do we know? Interesting question. A few teen titles, not that many, I'm sorry, but for younger teens, this first one, Daisy is 13. It's her spring semester of eighth grade. Her last name is Woodward, but the bully in her class calls her Woodworm due to her interest in bugs and entomology. Her older brother, Sorrel, called Squirrel, is 17, and he has Down syndrome, and he loves fashion. His goal, his life goal, is to become a YouTube fashion celebrity though their parents won't let him be on social media due to some bullying a few years ago. Now Daisy and her social studies class have an assignment to choose an idea to try to change the world. Daisy chooses Squirrel and his goal. She is not sure how she can do this with the parents, you know, not allowing him on social media, but she's going to try. And this, she has a good friend who supports her. Friendship, sibling support, working together, and there's a touch of romance in there too. Hazel is in seventh grade and is focused on preparing for and winning the school speech competition and beating Ella Quinn, who won last year because she mispronounced a word that she wasn't familiar with. 
Then Hazel learns that popular boy Tyler is cyberbullying and harassing Ella, and no one believes her because the messages he leaves on the pop popular social media website everybody's using cannot be traced. So they can't be traced back to him. But Hazel knows it's him because he continually misspells a particular word, and this bully is misspelling that word in his posts. Hazel, who has no friends and thought she had no time for friends, soon bonds with Ella and her best friend Riley, and they are going to find a way to stop Tyler. Omar is thrilled to be accepted at Dalib Academy for Boys. It is everything he hoped for until he is told that as a scholarship student, he is expected to do chores every week, and the great expectation for scholarship students are higher than for anyone else. It is likely the current scholarship students, Omar and his new friends, will be dismissed after their first year. He works very hard. They have a study group. They're working so hard, but it seems impossible. Is there any hope? Then the students and a few teachers band together in a walkout to protest the requirements. So support of others working together to change a rule that is unfair is all part of this. And this is a book related to the Amal Unbound series. Some nonfiction for teens. Brief biographies with each person having four pages in the book. The first page is a full page illustration and the following three pages usually have two insets and three additional smaller illustrations along with the main text. A good introduction of young people who made a difference in the world. Chronologically presented starting with Benjamin, Bannock, Benjamin Banneker born in 1731 and ending with David Hogg, the social activist born in 2000 who survived a school shooting and is active for gun control. It also includes Frederick Douglass, Mohandas Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Harvey Milk, Barack Obama, and Satoshi Tajiri, who is the inventor of Pokemon, to name a few. Mm -hmm. um, this, this book was first discussed on the Build a Better World book list, but doesn't it fit here too? Um, it starts with January 1. It has an idea for each day of the year. There are sure to be some ideas you and or your teens will want to do. After all, August 30th says, Pass on the pleasure of reading. So right there. Some other examples are talk less, listen more, think best case scenario all the time, and go to freerice.com to help end world hunger. And I went there, it's still active. You can still do that. So I wow. want to be sure it's still is available. And that's UNESCO, I think it is. I believe so. I should have double checked. I only have one book for older readers, but here we go. Most of the sport story takes place during Astrid's spring semester of her sophomore year in college. Occasional flashbacks take the reader to high school or to her college freshman year. Astrid has a plan for her future and nothing will deter or stop her from achieving it. She has an amazing sense of time and has scheduled her college life down to the minute. I'm not lying, she has it down to the minute. I'm studying for exactly, exactly this amount of time. But this is when she finds out that her boyfriend is a superhero, Kid Comet. There are lots of superheroes in her world and plenty of non-superheroes too. Astrid now has to fit in a secret class on how to be ready for trouble at any time as a girlfriend of a superhero. She doesn't have any minutes available, but she has to fit this in. And someone has been messing with her experiments at the lab. This is humorous, exhausting, a touch romantic and thoughtful about how it all could or would work, a romance with a superhero. So it's pretty fun. But she wore me out. I mean, ah. <laughs> now I do just happen to have a couple more titles since we're hang we're going over time. Sure. Um, Absolutely. This is one of many, many books about Peppa. This shows how she is kind to her family and friends. And that's the title. I don't even know what number it is or if they even do numbers with Peppa Pig, but it was very fun. Um, Tanisha spills grape juice on her new dress and runs out of the classroom. A girl in class remembers her mother telling her to be kind, but what really is kindness and how can she be kind to Tanisha? How can she help her? The listener or reader sees many ways of being kind as a girl thinks about them. And then they see the girl being kind to Tanisha. Wishes for a friend, not for things, but for wonderful things in their life. I wish you more ups than downs. I wish you more hugs 
than Uggs is how the book goes. And now I really am done. Thank you again. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, I, I do always mention during these, um, and I didn't mention yet to this time, um, that Sally's just sessions, um, I'm glad sometimes they're done um, before the holidays. Uh, because I get good ideas for things to buy for my nieces and nephews. And I even wrote down about that Indestructibles books out there. Um, I have a one-year-old niece and a three-year-old, and that could probably be very helpful to their parents. <laughs> so I'm going to look up, uh, look out for some of those. <laughs> you could come check the ones I have in my office. And I see will, yes, yeah, before we leave today. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sally. Um, this is great. Thank you, everybody, for uh, attending with us today. As if you have any um, questions or comments or ideas for other book titles for Sally, get them in the questions section here. Um, while we're waiting to see if anything comes up, I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen so I can uh, work on just uh, showing you how things are going to wrap up for today. There we go. Um, so here's today's session. Um, let's see what we're here. Um, as I mentioned, we um, are recording the show as we always do. And you can use your search engine of choice to type in Encompass Live. You always find our show that way or link to it from anywhere on our different pages. Um, oops. Here's our main Encompass Live page where we have our upcoming shows. And right underneath them is always a link to our archives. So this is where today's recording will be. It'll be at the top of the page here, most recent one at the top. Um, you'll notice there's nothing here for last week. We took last week off. A little holiday break for for me <laughs> um, but today's show will be right here at the top should be up and ready for everyone by the end of the day tomorrow um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available um, we also push that information out to our mailing lists and our various social media we do have and you can see on links in some of our pages um, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You'll get reminders. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, information about our speakers, and then um, announcements. Here we go when recordings are available for each show. Um, we also use the hashtag EncompLive on Twitter and Instagram. So if you do use those, you can see notifications about our shows there as well. Um, while we're here on the arch arch uh, archives, you can search for them for any topic. If you're looking for a topic or a type of library or something we presented on, um, you can search the sh full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current and to come up in your results. That is because this is the full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because, as you can see, this is a very long page. Uh, this goes back to January 2009 when Encompass Live first premiered, so you will have Every, all sorts of old shows on here. Um, we post our recordings to um, YouTube, the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel. So um, as long as we have a place to host all of them, um, they will always be up there. Uh, so uh, just do pay attention though to the original broadcast date of any show. If you do watch any old recordings, they all have a date on them so you can you know when they were recorded. Uh, many of our, sh our shows are fine. They stand the test of time. They'll always be good, useful information. But some things will become old, outdated. Resources and services may have changed drastically or don't exist anymore. Um, presenters may no, no longer work at a library they were at 10 years ago. Uh, so just do pay attention if you are watching one of our older shows. But as long as we have a place to host our recordings, we will always do that. Um, that's what we do as librarians, keep things for historical purposes sometimes. Um, we had mentioned, alluded to Sally's uh, children's and teen to us, uh, presentations she does. And if you look here, here's our, she did Best New Children's Books of 2022 on November 23rd. You can watch a recording of that and get her slides and um, presentation for that if you wanted to. Um, and then she has upcoming for her, there it is, January 11th. Best New Teen Reads of 2022. So at the end of the year, she always does a look back at the last year's children's and teens book and then her look forward to the summer reading program um, titles. And as she said, some titles will cross over, of course. <laughs> um, but if you want to um, hear her talk about her Best New Teen Reads, sign up for that one on January 11th. Oh, so we just have some thank yous coming in, people saying Merry Christmas to us, same to you. Um, um, but no other comments or questions. So I think we can wrap things up. Anything else, Sally? Not right now. We're good. I'm right. frantically for January. 
because oh, I got plenty of time. I initially don't have my list done until the Monday of the week of the presentation. So, so they're very, very up to date information <laughs> that you're getting from Sally. Absolutely. <laughs> Not a problem. All right. So thank you. Happy holidays to everyone. Um, oh, a good question about getting um, certification. Yes, everyone who attends our Encompass Live shows, um, and uh, within the next hour or so, you'll get an email um, automatically sent to you from the GoToWebinar software that will say, thank you for attending our show. Um, this is proof that you um, attended the live session, and there is a PDF certificate attached to that as well. So either the email or the certificate you can use as proof if you need that to submit for continuing education credits from wherever you are. Um, that automatically comes from the system. So look out for that email to come to you. All right, and that's today's show. Uh, next week, it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. On the last Wednesday of every month, Amanda Sweet comes on the show. She's our technology innovation librarian and some talks about something techie. Um, next week, we have a guest speaker coming in. Um, Amanda is actually gonna be off as far as I know, uh, for the holidays with her family. Um, but Bobby Jean Ludwig, who is from our University of Nebraska in Kearney is gonna come on and talk to me about how they use SpringShare um, to uh, manage their technology problems at the library at the university. So please do sign up for next week's show and any of our other shows we have here on, you see I've got January filled in, I've got February booked, I'm just waiting for descriptions, so keep an eye on here for that. Um, so hopefully we'll see all of you on a um, future episode. Oh, we got some more comments coming through hand here. Uh, someone says, thank you so much. You showcased some wonderful books. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> and as Sally said, she doesn't read everything. She doesn't have time for that. Um, that would be a great job, but no. <laughs> um, I did read all of these books though. You did read those, yes, but not every book that's been published. Not every book that comes here. <laughs> Probably more that you might own. But hopefully this will help you all with your um, summer reading um, next uh, for next year for your, as you're planning. Um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sally. Um, and um, ooh, you, get, you said you gave someone some great program idea. Ooh, great. Perfect. Good to hear, hear it. Yeah, we're glad to hear that it, it's helping you all. So I think we'll wrap things up. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks, Sally. We'll see you in January. <laughs> and um, happy holidays, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>